Hello everyone, welcome to this video lecture of 19 SCPHY U301. We have been discussing the first chapter, complex numbers, and this is the story so far. In the introduction section, we discussed polynomials. We discussed polynomials because mathematicians found that the real numbers are insufficient when they tried to find out the roots of polynomials and therefore they introduce this imaginary number i which is equal to square root of minus 1 and with that complex number came into picture x plus i y is one of the forms of complex number where x and y both are real and called as real and imaginary parts of complex number respectively and i is the imaginary number uh, which is square root of minus 1. Then we discussed a way to plot or to represent a complex number in a plane which is called as the Argand plane. This is the Argand plane where this horizontal axis is the real axis and the vertical axis is imaginary axis. Now in this plane a complex number can be represented as a point such that this is the position vector of the point which represents the complex number. This component of the position position vector now is x which is real part of complex number and this component is y which is the imaginary part of complex number. This length which joins the point and the origin is given by mod z which is called as modulus of complex number which can be calculated by using square root of x square plus y square. This formula for modulus is immediately obtained when we consider the geometry of the triangle which is formed here. This triangle with sides x, y and this hypotenuse r. This angle theta is called as argument of the complex number which is rotational angle made by this line which joins the complex number and the origin with positive real axis and it is calculated by this formula tan inverse of y by x. For demonstration purpose, I generally consider complex number in first quadrant but it can be straightforward extended for all the other three quadrant as well. Then we derived Euler's formula by expanding sine, cosine and exponential functions in Maclaurin series. The Euler's formula is e to the power i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta. We also saw the other two representations of complex number namely the polar representation of complex number. Polar representation is of this form r into cos theta plus i sin theta. In this form this r is nothing but the modulus of complex number and theta is the argument of complex number. We can write this complex number in third representation by using the Euler's formula here cos theta plus sin theta this term can be written as e to the power i theta and therefore z can be written as r into e to the power i theta. So we have covered all these three representations and basics of complex number. In this lecture we want to discuss the four algebraic operations of complex number addition, multiplication, subtraction and division. We will also consider the geometrical perspective for each of this operation. Let's start with the addition suppose I have two complex numbers z1 which is equal to x1 plus i y1 and the second co complex number is z2 which is x2 plus i y2 suppose z is the addition of these complex numbers z1 plus z2 now when I add these two numbers where z1 is x1 plus i y1 and z2 is x2 plus i y2 to add these numbers now what i can do is i can treat this i which is imaginary number square root of minus one i'll treat this i as any other real number and therefore i can rearrange this equation the right hand side as x1 plus x2 plus i into y1 plus y2 now this term x1 plus x2 is real term because x1 and x2 both are real and since this is real term it becomes the real part of summation of the two complex numbers z1 and z2. Similarly here y1 plus y2 this term 
is also real because y1 and y2 both are real but it is now multiplied by this r the imaginary number and therefore it is the imaginary part of addition of the two complex numbers so it is clear from this equation that when you add two complex numbers the real part of the addition is same as addition of real parts of the two complex number which are added and imaginary part is addition of the imaginary parts of the complex number being added this is true in general for n number of complex numbers z1 is this x1 plus i1 this is z2 x2 plus i y2 let me write a few more complex numbers z3 which is x3 plus i y3 and similarly i can have n such complex numbers Zn, which are given by xn plus iyn, and I want to add all these. So, what I want to do is I want to find out z1 plus z2 plus z3 up to zn. In shorthand notation, I can write this with a summation sign i is equal to 1 to n zi. This addition is also now same. The real part of this addition is the summation of real parts of all the complex number and its imaginary part which is imaginary because of this i is also same as summation of imaginary parts of the complex number so this is how you can add n number of complex number i would like to bring to your notice that addition of complex number is very similar to addition of vectors we will consider the two dimensional vector because complex are complex number are similar to two dimensional vectors suppose i have this two dimensional vector which is written like this vxi plus vyj in this case this i is the unit vector along positive x axis and j is unit vector along positive y axis keep that in mind this imaginary number i is different than this unit vector they have different meanings suppose this is the first vector that I want to add and the second vector let's say is u which is equal to u x i plus u y j. Now when I add these two vectors v plus u their addition is such that the x component is addition of the x components of the two vector and y component of resultant vector is addition of y components of the two vectors which is same as what happens in case of complex number when we discuss the geometrical interpretation of addition of two numbers it will be clear that why i discuss the addition of vectors suppose i have two complex number z1 which is represented by this point so this is the position vector for that complex number z1 which let's write as x1 plus i y1 suppose i have another complex number z2 let's consider the complex number z2 as x2 plus i y2 and the, it is clearly seen that the se second complex number is in second quadrant suppose this is z2 and this is z1 since addition of complex number is very similar to addition of vector their geometrical interpretation also is the same we can use the parallelogram law of vector addition to add two complex numbers these are the two position vectors and i want to add these two vectors or these two complex numbers by using parallelogram law of vector addition so what i do for from this first complex number from the head of this sec first complex number i draw z2 or i draw a vector which is parallel to z2 and which has same length as z2 and then i also draw one more vector at head of this z2 which has same length as z1 and which is parallel to z1 so this is then z1 and this is z2 now the sum of the complex number is this complex number which is given by this position vector therefore geometrically addition of two complex numbers is just like 
addition of two dimensional vectors where we can use the parallelogram law of vector addition now let's consider the second operation subtraction let's again consider the two complex numbers x1 plus i y1 and z2 is equal to x2 plus i y2 and i want to subtract z2 from z1 so i want to find out this z1 minus z2 addition is nothing but z1 plus minus of z2 so i am basically adding this complex number minus z2 to z1 and that gives me the subtraction z1 minus z2 so z therefore will be equal to x1 minus x2 plus i into y1 minus y2 let's now consider the subtraction in argon plane this is argon plane so this is real axis and this is imaginary axis i want to find out z which is equal to z1 minus z2 let's write down z1 and z2 as x1 plus i y1 and z2 is x2 plus i y2 suppose this z1 lies in the first quadrant and z2 lies in the fourth quadrant so this suppose is z2 this point is z2 now z1 minus z2 is basically z which is z1 plus minus of z2 to find this addition first i have to get minus z2 which is minus x2 minus i y2 for this complex number z2 this is the real component of the complex number whereas this is the imaginary component so this is x2 and this is y2 x2 is positive y2 is negative because we are considering the complex number in fourth quadrant now minus z2 is obtained by considering this which is minus x2 and the real and the imaginary component is this in the opposite side which is y2 and when i add these two vectors i get this point which is diagonally opposite to z2 so minus z2 is this point which is at which which has position vector diagonally opposite to that of z2 and now addition is simple we have to consider the parallelogram law of vector addition whereas i am adding this z1 plus minus z2 so first i draw a vector parallel to z2 with the same length as z2 at the head of z1 then i draw another vector at the head of z2 then i draw a vector parallel to z1 has same length as z1 and at the head of z2 and then this addition z1 plus minus z2 or which is basically z1 minus z2 is given by this vector this is the position vector so this is the point which is subtraction of z2 from z1 so this is how the subtraction is very similar to addition by reversing the sign you can subtract one complex number from this another complex number let's now consider product of two complex number again you can guess that i am going to write down the two complex number z1 which is x1 plus i y1 and z2 which is x2 plus i y2 i want to find out the product of z1 into z2 let's say z is the product now i can find this product by writing z1 and z2 in the rectangular form as they are given this is x2 plus i y2 now what i do i expand these this bracket so what i get is x1 into x2 plus i x1 y2 plus i y1 x2 and when i multiply this last two terms i get minus or plus i square into y1 into y2 now what we do we use the fact that i is equal to square root of minus 1 and therefore i square 
is equal to minus 1 and z turns out to be equal to into x2. I'll write away club all the real terms. So this term is real because i square is minus 1 and this is minus of y1 into y2 plus i into x1 y2 plus y1 x2. So this is the real part of the product of two complex numbers z1 and z2 and this is the imaginary part. It is imaginary because of this i. So here we have multiplied two complex numbers which are written in the rectangular form. Suppose I want to multiply n such complex numbers then z1 into z2 into z3 into so on up to zn. What I have to do is I have to write all these complex numbers in their rectangular form and then multiply them. Can you now see the difficulty here? What we have are these n number of terms in the brackets and when I try to expand all these brackets, how many terms will I get? I'll get number of terms which is 2 raised to power n. So for two complex number, we got four terms. In general, when we are multiplying n complex number, we will get 2 raised to n number of terms. So things are very quickly getting out of hand when you try to multiply more and more complex number with this rectangular form. But there is another better way to do that thing. We can use the exponential form. Since we are using exponential form, let me write z1 as r1 into e to the power i theta 1 where r1 is equal to square root of x1 square plus y1 square and theta1 is tan inverse of y by x. You know how to find out argument of the complex number and same is true for z2 which is r2 into e to the power i theta2. Now when I multiply z1 and z2 this is simple, much simple, r1 into e to the power i theta 1 into r2 into e to the power i theta 2. So this is going to be equal to r1 into r2 into e to the power i theta 1 into e to the power i theta 2 which is r1 into r2 and e to the power i theta 1 plus theta 2. The product z for n number of complex numbers is equal to r1 into r2 into r3 into rn. You have to find out product of modulus of all the complex number and the resultant complex number z is going to have the argument which is given by addition of arguments of all the complex numbers z4 plus sorry theta4 theta n therefore when you have more number of complex number to be multiplied what you do is you convert all those complex number in exponential form multiply them in exponential form and their product now can be written back into rectangular form by using the Euler's formula suppose this is equal to r the resultant modulus and this is equal to theta. How do we find this r? It is product of modulus of all the complex numbers which are being multiplied and this theta is obtained by adding modulus of all the complex number which are multi which are being multiplied. So z then is r into e to the power i theta and I want to write this complex number in rectangular form. So I can use the Euler's formula now r into e to the power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta and therefore this when written in rectangular form is going to have r cos theta as the real part and r sin theta as the imaginary part. This is the geometrical interpretation of product of complex numbers. Resultant complex number has the modulus which is product of all the complex numbers and its argument is given by addition of all the arguments of the complex number. We will see a few special cases. Suppose I have z1 
which is equal to x1 plus i y1 let me consider sorry i y 1 here suppose i am considering that z1 in this fourth quadrant and i want i'm multiplying this z1 by minus 1 and we want to consider this special case let's say this multiplication is equal to z even if it seems pretty much clear here that it is going to be minus z2 we want to see that from geometrical point of view what is happening when we multiply that complex number by minus 1 let's write z1 in exponential form r1 into e to the power i theta 1 let's also write minus 1 in exponential form how can i write minus 1 in exponential form minus 1 is going to be here this is minus 1 its real part is minus 1 and its imaginary part is 0 so it lies on this real axis now to write this minus 1 in exponential form first i have to find out the modulus of complex number modulus of complex number is simply length of this line which is equal to 1 and then i have to find out the argument of complex number theta which is rotational angle made by this line with positive real axis so it is this angle which you can see is pi you don't have to actually use the formula tan inverse of y by x and you don't have to use the formula square root of x square plus y square to find out modulus of this complex number it is pretty much clear from the geometry so minus 1 when written in exponential form is 1 into e to the power i pi so let me write it here 1 into e to the power i pi so when i multiply z1 by minus 1 what i get is r1 so modulus of the product is same as modulus of z1 it is unchanged the argument is now different argument of this product is going to be theta 1 plus pi can you see what is happening here when i multiply the complex number by minus 1 what is happening is its modulus is unchanged but its argument is added by pi so basically what happens is this complex number here which is z1 is rotated by angle pi and you get minus z1 therefore multiplication of a complex number by minus 1 rotates the position vector of complex number pi pi radians you can equally say that it rotates the position vector by minus pi radians it won't make much of a difference let's now consider one more special case where we are trying to multiply the complex number z by i i i am trying to write in exponential form now let's first plot this in argon plane this is real axis this is imaginary axis the complex number is going to be here i is going to be here where this length is equal to 1 for i the real part is 0 and its imaginary part is equal to 1 and therefore that number is going to lie on imaginary axis now so this is i what is modulus of this complex number clearly it is 1 because this length is equal to 1 what is argument of this complex number argument of complex number is obtained by rotating this positive real axis by pi by 2 radians and therefore argument of i is pi by 2 so this is e to the power i pi by 2 where 1 is modulus of the complex number and pi by 2 is the argument when i multiply a complex number z by i where z suppose is r into e to the power i theta and i is 1 into e to the power i pi by 2 what i get is r into e to the power i theta plus pi by 2 so if z is somewhere here then what happens when i multiply it by i you can see that the modulus is unchanged whereas the argument is increased by pi by 2 so this this position vector now is rotated by 90 degrees so this is the geometrical interpretation multiplication of complex number by i rotates the position vector of complex number by pi by 2 radians 
Let's now consider this final case. Multiplication of a complex number by minus i. What do you think will happen? We'll see that. This is real axis. This is imaginary axis. I want to write minus i in exponential form now. Minus i has real part equal to 0 and imaginary part as minus 1. So it will lie here. This length is 1 and therefore modulus of this complex number minus i is 1. What is the argument now? To reach at this point, I have to rotate positive real axis clockwise by angle of pi by 2 and therefore argument of this complex number is minus pi by 2. In exponential form it is now e to the power minus i pi by 2 when I multiply z which is say r into e to the power i theta by minus 1 what will happen now z the product is going to be r into e to the power i theta minus pi by 2 so if the position this is the position vector of complex number z then after multiplication by minus i its modulus is unchanged but it is now rotated by pi by 2 radians along clockwise direction because this is minus pi by 2 clockwise now and this is i or rather minus i into z so this is what happens when you multiply complex number by minus i it rotates the position vector by minus pi by 2 radians or i can equally say that it rotates the position vector by pi by 2 along clockwise direction fourth operation now division of complex numbers suppose z1 is x1 plus i y1 here we will divide the complex number in the rectangular form x2 plus i y2 and i want to find out z which is z1 by z2 this is going to be equal to x1 plus i y1 divided by x2 plus i y2 the difficulty here is because of this denominator which is a complex number if i could get the denominator which is real then the division is possible so what i do i multiply and divide this by complex conjugate of the denominator so it is going to be x1 plus i y1 divided by x2 plus i y2 what i'll do is i multiply it by x2 minus i y2 which is complex conjugate of the denominator and i since i'm multiplying it if i don't want to change the product i have to divide it also this is equal to i'll first have to expand the brackets in the numerator this expansion is going to be x1 into x2 minus y1 into y2 plus i into i have right away multiplied them viewers can check that this is actually the product of the expansion of these brackets in the denominator what we will have we we have the multiplication of a complex number and its complex conjugate so we expect that this is equal to mod z whole square which is nothing but x2 square plus y2 square and the division now is clear x1 x2 minus y1 y2 divided by x2 square plus y2 square this now is the real part of the division and the imaginary part is y1 x2 minus x1 y2 divided by x2 square plus y2 square so this is how you can divide two complex numbers in rectangular form you have to multiply and divide the numerators by complex conjugate of the denominator to obtain the division and you can get the real and the imaginary part dividing them in exponential form is now simpler z1 into z2 which is the division i'll write z1 as r1 into e to the power i theta 1 and z2 as r2 into e to the power i theta 2. so this division is equal to r1 by r2 
into e to the power i theta 1 minus theta 2 now so it is just like the multiplication of two complex number the resultant complex number has modulus which is the ratio of the modulus of two complex number and the argument is subtracted theta 2 is subtracted from theta 1 so that was the last operation i wanted to consider in this video lecture let's now summarize we saw how we can add two complex numbers when adding complex number it is always a good idea to keep the complex number in rectangular form subtraction is very similar to addition and both of them are just like adding or subtracting two two dimensional vectors and there they follow the parallelogram law of vector addition then we considered the product it is good to have the complex number in exponential form to find out product of complex numbers you should always switch between the forms of complex number depending on the operations you are trying to do product of complex number now it's such that the resultant complex number has modulus which is product of moduli of the complex number being multiplied and the argument of resultant complex number is addition of all the arguments of the complex number for division as far as division in rectangular form is considered we have to multiply and divide this division by complex conjugate of the denominator to get the real and imaginary parts it is important that you keep in mind here onwards that for different operations or to find out different functions of complex number you should always convert from one form to other if the complex number is given in a form which is not desirable you should convert it to the form which is desirable from next video lectures we will start discussing different functions of complex numbers we want to discuss powers roots trigonometric and hyperbolic functions of complex number in next lecture we will discuss the first of that which is power of complex number that's all for this lecture thank you for watching